quarterfinal Friday here in Greenville. It will be another big day with the four games South Carolina and Georgia gets us started. We have a 4-5 game coming up right after this one between Texas A&M and the Arkansas Razorbacks who knocked down 17 three-pointers in their opening round win against Auburn. Later on this evening, LSU will take on the second-ranked team in this tournament, Mississippi State, and then Kentucky makes their debut here in the quarterfinal round facing the Tennessee Lady Vols who came from behind to beat Mizzou. Can Georgia do it? They are the first team in the country this year that has faced the number one team in the country three times. It's their second meeting with number one South Carolina. They faced number one Baylor back when the Lady Bears had the top spot in the national ranking. So this is nothing new for Georgia, but it is a mountain to climb here, especially with this loud crowd here in Greenville. South Carolina in the home white, the number one seed controls the opening tip. Well, I think the number one thing to watch today is down low, number 14 and number four, Leah Boston and Jenna Stady. This is gonna be a great matchup. We'll be able to watch all afternoon. Georgia is a very good defensive team and they get a steal right away and right away they look for Stady and that's a great start. As Catch mentioned, Stady was held to four points and two rebounds in their meeting this year. The regular season meeting won by Carolina on January 26, 88 to 53. Boston answers back. And I think this is going to be the matchup of the afternoon, to be honest. When you look at the two of them, you can tell the game plan right off the bat for both teams. Get the ball inside. I think whichever team can get either one in foul trouble quickly has a better shot. Chloe Chapman getting the start. Again, Q Morrison, member of the all-defensive team in the SEC, out with an injury. She had labrum surgery. And getting the tie-up is Bree Beal, outstanding defender, one of three freshmen in the starting lineup. You know the story all season long. Dawn Staley brought in this top-ranked recruiting class, put them right into the mix, started them from day one, and they have played at an elite level all season long. Well, Bree Beal is such a great defender. She is all over one of those tenacious defenders that you don't want to go against offensively, but you want to have on your team. Chapman. Had it knocked away, Harris tried to save it, and the shot clock expires, and it will be South Carolina basketball. And you just mentioned it as far as the, the freshman on the floor, number one, number four, and number 12. Zaya Cook, Aaliyah Boston, and Bree Bill, those three have been such a huge opponent, or such a huge component to this team. They bring so much. Boston blocked by Stady, who had a career-high seven blocks in their win against Auburn yesterday. Knocked out of the hands of Conley, it will remain at Georgia basketball. So a little bit more detail about this freshman class with Aaliyah Boston, the freshman of the year in the SEC. Zaya Cook, member of the all-freshman team. Letitia Mihir, number 10 in the ranking, and Bree Beal, outstanding defender and rebounder for the University of South Carolina. Ty Harris right there. She, I believe, is the key to this team. Of course, you look at Aaliyah Boston down low, but Ty Harris, the way that she plays, she's so composed at all times. You look at how these freshmen have been able to adapt to this level of play and how fast they were. I think the biggest thing, Ty Harris and her leadership. The scoring numbers for the freshmen and Harris, the senior, who of course has big game experience dating back to her freshman year. By the end of that season, midway through actually, she was the starting point guard for a team with a lot of veterans that went on to win the national championship for South Carolina. And another turnover for Georgia. They turn it over on average 17 times a game, which has been an issue for Joni Taylor's team this season. Well, I think it's going to be even more important today when you look at your South Carolina. And I've, we talked about this the last two days. Every single team, when it's their first time playing on this floor, they struggle a little bit early on. Bree Bill for two, they struggle a little bit early on, but as they get into the flow, they start picking up speed. And what Georgia cannot afford to do is not score, turn the ball over, and be put in that situation. I'll be a foul on Kiki Herbert Harrigan, the other senior in the starting five. Well, I would say at first glance, South Carolina is not having those opening jitter problems. Well, a little bit, but you see right here, rebuild. The last two times that they've scored, they have done it down low. Ty Harris drives into the paint. Aaliyah Boston, her first basket in the paint. Rebuild posting up in the paint. That is going to be the game plan for this South Carolina team. 
Jenna Stady has all three points for Georgia, went for 20 points, 14 rebounds, and a career-high seven blocks in the win against Alabama here yesterday. Outstanding free throw shooter. With that make, she is 42 of her last 47 over a nine-game span. Well, I think the good thing, too, is the last time she was faced up against South Carolina and Aaliyah Boston, she had four points and she already has four points. Well, there's a mistake by South Carolina, a turnover as Harris throws it into the backcourt, the second turnover for Staley's team. And you watch Dawn Staley on the sideline and she's never shooken up, you know, like she's never shaken. It just seems like she's always composed. And you can tell her facial expression when she gets upset, but this is just the beginning of the game. The South Carolina team is getting into the, the flow of their offense. Connolly shut off by Boston, and she stepped out of bounds. Aaliyah Boston, the defensive player of the year in the SEC, first team all-conference selection and the freshman of the year. What a debut. Where she stepped right in from prepping at Worcester Academy to one of the top players in the country, let alone the SEC. Well, interestingly enough, being just a freshman, she has so much more to grow. I know you've been very impressed by Kiki Herbert Harrigan, the senior whose game just continues to get better week after week as she wraps up her collegiate career. Well, it's been fun watching her for the last couple of years, but I think halfway through this season, she really stepped her game up. I don't know what it was. I asked Don Staley, was it something that you put in the water? And she said, <laughs> no, I think it's really Kiki. Aaliyah Boston having a freshman group around her has helped her grow her game, but also, you know, you just see how athletic she is and all the things she's capable of doing. She added so many different elements to it. <laughs> oh. Offensive foul, Zaya Cook showing off that great handle, but it doesn't work out for the freshman who gets called for the foul. Well, Zaya Cook trying to get herself active within the flow of the offense, and you see what she's capable of doing, that behind the leg, but like backwards behind the leg, move to the basket. Maybe next time she'll pull up. Three turnovers for each team here in the early going. Cook knocks it away into the hands of Harris. And then coming back, Stephanie Paul trying to track down her second steal. Battle for the loose ball. The tie-up will give the possession to South Carolina. And it's been a really good start for Georgia, able to stay close to South Carolina in this game. South Carolina obviously struggling a little bit with those shots. Or Georgia, sorry, rather struggling with their shots a little bit. Ty Harris is off. Second chance here. Bree Beal will tee it up from outside. Bat it back out again. Chloe Chapman uh, tried to come up, but Beal touched it last. It'll be Georgia basketball. And now the officials can have a conversation, and they'll change the call. Now off the knee of Chapman and out of bounds. Great hustle play by both teams. Harris runs the show at the point. Herbert Harrigan trying to move on Stephanie Paul, and you see some of that explosiveness from the senior from Pembroke Pines, Florida. Well, it's great to watch her, and Herbert Harrigan, Kiki Herbert Harrigan, is a, she's a four. Making moves like that, it's, it's going to be incredible to watch her transition from the college game to the pros. Three-pointer from Connolly is off the mark. Chapman back the other way. Hesitation, drop back to Stady. Well, that was one of the keys of the game for Georgia. Get Jenna Stady going early, but along with getting Jenna Stady, now that she's in the flow, they've got to figure out a way to get Connolly some baskets, get Maya Codwell some baskets. Other people are going to have to step up. Chapman had a great game yesterday. And a foul on the inside. That will get us to a timeout with Georgia hanging in there here in the early going against number one, South Carolina. Gamecocks got their trip here to Greenville started on a special note. That's next. Well, we're about 90 minutes from the South Carolina campus in Columbia. And this is a statewide love for the number one team in the country. So yesterday, 
The Gamecocks got the day started at the Greenville Children's Hospital making some special deliveries. Teddy bears to help brighten up their day. And these were tossed onto the court back in December. That's one of the big events for South Carolina at Colonial Life Arena. Here's Andrea Carter with more. Well, you saw all the teddy bears that South Carolina brought to the Children's Hospital. Those came from that teddy bear toss. They ended up having almost 2,500 teddy bears brought by the fans. They gave some to Duke. That's the team they were playing against. They visited multiple places in Columbia and still had teddy bears left over, so they brought them to Greenville. Kiki Herbert Harrigan said it's so important for them to do things like that because she knows children look up to them, and it really helps her put things in perspective. She said she's so thankful for the position that she's in and she is absolutely blessed guys and on a personal note I was very thankful to have Carolyn Peck sitting next to me courtside on that day because we were doing that game against Duke and everybody's throwing teddy bears you need a head on the swivel and you need a good defender good shot blocker <laughs> like Carolyn Peck to help you out so thank you Carolyn she'll be here tonight with Courtney Lyle for our night side doubleheader to get things started but it just goes to show you and you lived it as a player in Tennessee when it seems everyone in the state is back behind the program, how that picks you up. And Dawn Staley has embraced the fans, as they call it, in South Carolina. And that love has been shown right back for well, years I now. Think, I think it's all about community. And that is something that was always emphasized with Pat. We were going to make sure that we were going to be great in the community. And so being able to go out, go to the children's hospital, do teddy bears, and just be be engaged and have that engagement. You look around and you see a lot of fans. You see a lot of South Carolina fans. You see a lot of Georgia fans here too and Tennessee, of course. But I think it's really about the way that these players have gone beyond the basketball court. One of two for Bree Beal. South Carolina brings some pressure into the backcourt. Well, I think Don is trying to figure out a way. How do you get this Georgia team to play a little bit on their heels? They've gotten a little bit too comfortable probably to her liking. But for Georgia, they've done a great job. They broke the pass. Now it's about getting a solid pass. Knocked away by Boston out of the hands of Stady. Good recovery by Georgia to get back in transition. Defense and South Carolina will set up. You can see South Carolina has taken it inside against Georgia. That same holds true on the other end. Jenna Stady has scored all eight Georgia points so far. Now they'll try it from the outside. Herbert Harrigan off the mark, a rebound for Stady. Feed to Stephanie Paul. She'll fade back a little bit and knock it down. Stephanie Paul, one of two seniors on the roster for Georgia, has battled injuries throughout her career, but she's had a spring in her step here through two games, it appears in Greenville. Well, she knows this is her last opportunity being that senior. You want to go out with the bang, and so I think it's been really important for her. Boston barrels in and gets it to go, and the foul. And Boston, you knew she was going to take it down low, especially when you get that switch. You see Stephanie Paul trying to defend her. There's no way to defend Aaliyah Boston with that mismatch. Started right from game one of her collegiate career when she posted a triple-double against Alabama State. First ever South Carolina freshman to post a triple-double. 12 points, 12 rebounds, 10 blocks. And Aaliyah Boston, like you just said, she's been dominating since she entered the college scene. Good catch by Stady. Boston recovers there. And here come the Gamecocks. Destiny Henderson into the game. Can't get it. And the follow-up by Bray Beal. We told you she is very good on the glass. And South Carolina has stretched it out to a six-point lead. Well, it's interesting. You look at South Carolina's team, and especially right now, every single player on the floor can score. Chapman tried to force it into Stady, and now South Carolina is starting to get on the move here. Back into Boston. Stady touched it last. It'll be South Carolina ball. Well, a good solid defense by Jenna Stady. Hands straight up to force her to Leah Boston to alter her shot just enough to get her to miss. Victoria Saxton comes into the game for Herbert Harrigan. Chapman will check out for Georgia.
Kayla Hubbard comes in. Joni Taylor gave her praise after the game yesterday, saying she has provided some good work off the bench defensively. And that's a good shot for Aaliyah Boston right there. She can take that and make it. Stady's not afraid to fire it up from outside, and she knocks down a three. Jenna Stady obviously determined to make amends for that first meeting with South Carolina when she was held to four points and two rebounds. She has been such a different player over this last month for Georgia. Well, I think you just nailed it on the head. She's been a different player, and she has known what this team needs from her, and that's something she has said. She said, I have to step up and I have to be better. And when she realized that, think about yesterday's game. First half, she didn't really touch the ball much. Second half, she got in position. Boston tries a three-pointer. She has been trying more three-pointers as of late. In fact, all her attempts have come in the last nine games, including today. Great box out right there. <laughs> Caldwell tried to do too much with the dribble. A tie-up will keep it with Georgia. Well, what has, in your eyes, been the most important thing with Jenna Stady? Because she's gone for double figures now in nine straight games. Over the previous eight games, she's averaging 20 points a game. I mean, it's not as simple as flipping a switch, is it? Well, maybe it is, but I think it's her <laughs> mentality. I think really coming out and, and realizing that with her body, she's lost weight. She's getting up and down the floor a lot better. She's able to get a lot of rim run in the transition game. I think for her, it was changing her mentality and realizing, hey, you know what? If our team is going to win, I have to step up. And then, of course, when Q Morrison goes out, she's been a solid piece for their success. Gabby Connolly weaving through traffic and getting her first points. And after South Carolina went in front by six, Georgia's rattled off five quick ones. Saxton inside. Chapman's back into the game. Henderson tries it from outside. And a rebound for Georgia. They have a chance to take the lead here in the final minute of the first. But there is some of that South Carolina defense. Lily Grissett just into the game and takes it in for her first two. And that is where South Carolina is so good with every single player, and especially when a player comes in, it's that extra energy that they have. Georgia has to do a better job. They've got to take care of the basketball for one, but they've got to make solid passes. Saxton with the steal, and she was fouled. And we'll head to the free throw line. Well, South Carolina's dominance has just been remarkable. They have not trailed after the first quarter in any game this year. And Georgia was bringing up the court with a chance to go in front in the final minute, which this is pretty rare territory for any opponent for South Carolina over these last few months to be this close in the first quarter. I know I said this earlier, but the struggle coming in that first quarter for a team in this SEC tournament, in this arena, every single team that we've seen has started off slow, and we see this tonight with Georgia. Stady, Grissett has paid dividends right away coming into the game. Henderson gets it to go. Shot clock is off as Chapman looks to take it all the way to the hoop. And Saxton with the big block. This crowd on their feet. Here comes Henderson in the final seconds. Back to Saxton for two. That's how quickly it can happen when you're taking on the number one team in the country. It has been awesome. South Carolina has come in. They have taken over in the last 30 seconds. Literally, the game just changed. South Carolina is up 23-15. It is the largest lead of the quarter. And once again, South Carolina does not trail after one. The defense sparking the offense. And the number one team is up eight after one. not about what they're ranked and what we're ranked. It's about today. It's one game. It's about today. And today, we have to be the better team. Just today. And you got to go take it. They're not going to give it to you. You got to go take it. But it's about one game. One game.
Let's go. A focused Joni Taylor in the locker room pregame, and Jenna Stady responded for her head coach with 11 points in the first quarter. Well, Jenna Stady is the reason that Georgia is this close in this game that they're even in the game because without her 11 points, everybody else has struggled to score, but that has been part of their game plan. Like Joni said, it takes one play, one possession, one game. Look at this, her climb peaking here in these last eight games of this 2020 season. 11 points on four or five shooting. Georgia had the ball down one in the final minute of the quarter. They turned the ball over three times in that final minute, helping South Carolina go on a 7-0 run, and Stady has picked up a foul. That's her second, and that's crucial. It is crucial, and, you know, you look at just the substitution pattern. Aaliyah Boston is out of the game right now, able to take a rest. Jenna Stady in Georgia, they cannot even afford for her to get off the bench and on, or get off the floor and onto the bench. Well, I, I, I'm going to interrupt because they gave the foul to Gabby Connolly, not Stady. I saw Stady's arm come down. I thought it was there. I think everybody on that Georgia bench was holding their breaths for a minute, but it is on <laughs> Connolly. That's her first. So one foul on Stady, to be clear. So she'll stay in the game. And you make a great point with Aaliyah Boston on the bench. Can they keep Stady going right now? This run continues. A 9-0 run in just over a minute's play. Turnovers are crushing Georgia right now. That is their 11th turnover. The previous 10 turnovers led to 11 points in that first quarter. Well, I mean, it's not even just the turnovers. It's the unforced turnovers that they have that have led to quality possession for South Carolina. The turnover right underneath South Carolina's basket two times right before the end of the first quarter. Georgia's got to figure out a way to stay in the game. They've got to take care of the ball. Well, they got to slow things down and get it to Stady. Instead, they turn it over again. Drea, what was going on in that South Carolina huddle? Well, Don emphasized running in transition and looking to score. But one thing she did say is if they get into half-court offense, guys, this is a big lineup. She wants them to use their size and post up their big guards. Well, or they can go right to their shortest player on the court right now and attack the basket, which works as well. Thanks, Drea. Well, you see, even that happened. Destiny Henderson compared to Gabby Connolly's body size means you can tell that they are beefed up. They can guard or they can post up anyone down low. Chapman can't get it. The freshman who's played so well as of late, Jordan Isaacs, puts it in for two. She had seven points and four rebounds in 15 minutes in the win against Alabama yesterday. When Joni tried to sub in, Kayla Hubbard at that four position. Kayla Hubbard came in, had a couple turnovers. The Saxton on the handoff, tried to give it to Beal, but that's a turnover for South Carolina. Now, Caitlin Hose will come into the game for Georgia. She's a shooter, as Connolly will sit down. You know, you say you want to try to take advantage of things with Leah Boston on the bench, but with Victoria Saxton coming in in relief. Or maybe you want to take advantage while Ty Harris is on the bench, but then here comes Destiny Henderson onto the floor. There is not a big drop-off at those spots with the way these kids have played this year. Well, they just look at the energy that they play with, and whether you're a starter or you come in off the bench, the expectation is the same. Shot clock is down to four. Nothing coming easy for Georgia. And the block by Grissett, who's been outstanding off the bench defensively. But then Caitlin Hose reads the pass and turns it back over. Chapman forced it, had an open look, really tried to get it to Stady. It's almost like Georgia is becoming, they're scared to shoot the ball. They're scared to take the open shot. They're trying to get one step closer. And at times, they don't even need that. South Carolina, they're too good of a team. You've got to take your open possession. Here is Chapman who takes it away, and she'll go in to finish. Jenna Stady, lucky she didn't get called for that foul right there, but Chapman able to, yeah, to grab agree. that. That was close. And you look at the sideline who's coming back into the game. Oh, Stady held her ground and took it away from Herbert Harrigan. Now running up is Isaacs. Here comes Georgia fighting back. 
So I think with Nathaniel, you look at it, Georgia, they're getting in the flow. They're starting to play with each other. Caitlin Hose comes in the game. She gets that steal, gets them going in transition. The biggest thing, they got to keep, they got to take care of the ball. They're doing a good job on defense. Again, finding success in the paint with Herbert Harrigan, who has six. Twenty-four of the twenty-nine points for South Carolina have come in the paint so far. Staining. Chapman. Can't get the follow. Georgia still fighting. And they'll come up empty. Three. Opportunity to get that ball in. Henderson, tough shot. Georgia ball. Well, this has been going back and forth, so we're going to have five fresh bodies come in to combine for the two teams. Here in South Carolina just doing a great job attacking the basket. Every single possession you look at, they're getting the ball, whether they pass it in down low or whether they get that shot in the paint. Oh. Friends now, <laughs> and friends <laughs> always, we should say, but Mike Neighbors and Gary Blair, who of course work together at Arkansas. Mike now the Arkansas head coach. And they're Gary sharing the game plans. Stand. Well, I don't know if they're doing that. <laughs> Mike may be playing a video game on his phone. Oh, there, no, like, how about a little hug for everybody? How about a little arm and arm? <laughs> oh, rock, oh, paper, oh, scissors? Rock, paper, oh, who's going oh, in there? Oh, man, that is a cliffhanger right there. We don't know who won. I think that has been, it's always fun when you get to see the two of them. And, you know, we've gotten a lot of time with, with both Mike Neighbors and Coach Blair. And, you know, I've got a lot of respect for both of them and their teams. Mike said after the game yesterday when Arkansas put 90 points on the board against Auburn, he said he saw Coach Blair scouting. He's like, I don't, I don't know why he bothered scouting. He, he knows what we're going to do. We talk every week. And we go back and every forth. Day. So there are no secrets between these two programs. That's our next game, Texas A&M and Arkansas, about 30 minutes after the conclusion of game one here on quarterfinal Friday. I think everybody's interested to see which Texas A&M team shows up. The, the most interested person is Gary Blair, their head coach. But they dropped their last two games of the regular season. Maybe are... that's what the rock, paper, scissors was. What <laughs> Kennedy Carter is going to come out today? Well, if it was only that easy, but we do know that Kennedy Carter has a track record of performing in the postseason, so we'll see what first-team all-conference selection is able to do. That's going to be a foul on Destiny Henderson. Destiny Henderson trying to be aggressive with Gabby Connolly in that sense, just a little bit too aggressive. Ten-point game. Humper back into the game. Back off for Chloe Chapman, the freshman from Maryland, who has stepped in place of Q Morrison and has stepped up big for Georgia. Well, and I think that was an important play for Chapman to be able to see that she can score in that half-court offense. She tried to defer a little bit and getting the ball down low to Jenna Stady, but she's got to take those shots. Ami here in trouble, and a foul will get her out of trouble, and she'll go to the free throw line when we come back here to Greenville. South Carolina on top by eight. The winner going on to the semifinals. Back here in Greenville, the Gamecocks with a 31-23 lead. Kiki Herbert Harrigan so far with eight points and two rebounds on the day for Gamecocks with a slight edge right now. Here's a look at the bracket as we entered this Friday quarterfinal round. Georgia Bulldogs punching their ticket to today's quarterfinal. We'll have a couple more games coming up after this one. Arkansas, Texas A&M as soon as this game is over. And coming up at halftime, we'll talk a little bit more about the Razorbacks versus the Aggies. We'll get into Dawn Staley's fashion. We know she has swag, and of course, we'll talk this game. What have you seen from Georgia? Georgia has the toughness, they have the grit, but at the same time, coach, they're shooting themselves in the foot. Too many turnovers right now for, uh, for Georgia. Absolutely. In South Carolina, they found the magic, pounded inside. 24, their 31 points come in the paint. They're not going to stop. Well, plenty to talk about in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Alyssa. Yeah, to the point made by Steffi, 13 turnovers for Georgia. Georgia is shooting 10 of 20 from the field, so they're 50% on their field goals, but they got to hold on to the basketball 
And that's been a problem. Well, that's definitely the problem right now. And now Jenna Stady back in the game. But I think the big thing is you don't have to get the ball to Jenna Stady every single possession. Sometimes she is not open, but you're the one that's open. So stop trying to force the ball down low and take the open shot. Amir here at the free throw line. We'll get a second. Averaging four and a half points a game. Missed four teams while playing with Team Canada. National team duties. And then here is really trying to figure out where she fits into this offense and where she fits into the flow. Obviously, we've talked a lot about the other three freshmen. She is a freshman as well. Coming in, quality minutes. She's trying to find her way. Connelly defended by Grissett out top of the defense here for South Carolina. Chapman, Connelly, rare open look for her. Can't get it. Bates working with Hubbard to try to save it. They could not. South Carolina ball. Well, we talked to Don Staley yesterday about, you know, that phrase, what a difference a year makes. I mean, this that should be the highlight video title for them when they're wrapping up the season because last year they had 23 wins. That's going to be a traveling violation. Their last SEC tournament appearance, they were one and done here last year. They lost in the quarterfinal round to Arkansas, but she said this is a different team. They don't have the habits of last year's team. One of her players referenced functions was the word. Well, what does that mean? It's just like, well, you know, to paraphrase, like drama, that everything has been great about this team. The chemistry has been great. And, and, and Dawn, I think, tries to downplay it. She is the coach of the year in the SEC. But I think by giving ownership to the team, they're, even with freshmen, mature and responsible enough to handle it all themselves, and they have played that way. An unselfish team that has just clicked from day one, as we mentioned. Yes, no functions, as she would say. But I think it's the big thing when you have solid freshmen that come in with a different mentality, and Georgia continues to attack the basket. South Carolina try to put the press on. Long as Georgia take care of the ball and they get quality shots, I think they have a chance in this game. They're down seven inside of four to go in the second quarter after Bates got her first points. Brissett feeds it inside to Boston. She gets it in deep like that. It is over. Yeah, and there's nothing you can do. And even for Jenna Stater, she's got to be careful that she doesn't pick up a foul trying to go over Aaliyah Boston back. Chapman showing the handle here. Dropping it off for Bates. Everything but the bucket, that trip. Anderson on the pull-up. South Carolina, Ty Harris lead that break. Always looking up the floor, always making the right plays. With 31% of the offense, I believe, goes through Ty Harris's hands. Six points off the bench for Destiny Henderson, who has been an outstanding performer in the reserve role. Boston. <laughs> A block slash spike, and Harris turns it into points. Aaliyah Boston, are you kidding me right now? I think Coach Landers said this in the open. He said, the block party, we are not here for a birthday party. <laughs> we are here for a block party. Stady can't hit. I think Georgia is wishing their invitation to the block party was lost in the mail. Well, Jenna Stady's had a few blocks on her end, too, so it's a little bit of shared love. Boston will try it outside, and when she starts developing that part of her game, wow. Yeah, I think Boston is going to be a phenomenal player already this year. The freshman of the year, defensive player of the year, first team all SEC. I mean, all the accolades she's already accumulated in her freshman year, and I, I said this, this is just the beginning. Hubbard waited a split second too long, and you can't do that if Boston's coming in defensively. For sets to the basket, two more. It's a 10-0 run for South Carolina. Timeout, Georgia. Well, what can you say? When South Carolina gets going, there is no way to stop them. And Aaliyah Boston started it with the block party, finished it with a couple shots, and has kept this team rolling. See right here for the block party. Oh, man. <laughs> and then you got Aaliyah Boston leading the break, and then Hubbard looks over her shoulder. She almost waited for Boston, but she starts the break. 
Ty Harris with the finish. And then Aaliyah Boston, as we said, she's been stretching that range out. And that just looks so pretty for someone who does so much inside. And then a couple more paint points as Lily Grissett with a finish. And that has been a capper on this 10 nothing run right now for South Carolina. Remember, Georgia had it down to seven with inside of four to go. And much like the end of the first quarter, it can happen so quickly when you're playing South Carolina. Well, that's what they do, and it did happen so quick. It's like you look down, and it started on that block. That block kind of spurred that next couple of seconds. There wasn't a minute. There wasn't two minutes. There was literally a couple of seconds. I feel like that everything happened. So let's see if Georgia can regroup here and make a little run before the end of the second quarter. Stady will take it outside. That's a good start. Jenna Stady continues to impress for Georgia. Well, it'll be interesting now. Leah Boston sitting on the bench again. What will Jenna Stady be allowed to do? So now she didn't have to bang. She didn't want to bang against Leah Boston down low, but maybe she gets an opportunity. Ami here had it knocked away. Stady and Bates teaming up for the defense. Dawn Staley up and yelling at the officials looking for a foul call. Maya Caldwell. Bates, Stady will try again from three. And Stady gets called for the foul, giving the push to Saxton. Well, that'll be her second foul right there. So you see her already going out. So she'll have to go to the bench. This is what she takes to the bench with her. 14 points and four rebounds. Doesn't feel like she had a long drought in there, but apparently she did. Remember, it came quickly for her. She had first eight points, I think, for Georgia today. Well, I think even when you think about a drought, I mean, she still was effective, and that's what she did yesterday, even when she wasn't scoring. Ty Harris showing a little bit of what she can do. 39% from outside the three-point line of the season. Seven points to go along with her three assists. Final minute, first half. And I love watching Ty Harris play. You see that focus right there, just her leadership. That is something that Coach Daly continues to talk about when we talk to every single one of the players on the team. They all talk about Ty and just how awesome and amazing she is. Javin Nicholson, the freshman into the game for Georgia. Shot clock is turned off, and Ty Harris isn't going to wait around. Knocked away by Chapman. Caldwell with six. Connolly for three. Yes. Well, that gives Georgia a little bit of a bump heading to the locker room, but they will trail by 14 here at halftime. Well, I think that's important. They needed that little run just enough to get them going. Well, Dawn doesn't look too thrilled here, but her team is on top by 14. Let's hear what she has to say with Drea. Coach Staley, you were rubbing your forehead. What are you thinking right there to finish the half? I mean, we're playing erratic. We're playing erratic. We've got to make better decisions. Should have been pull the ball out, get the last shot on the floor. But that's me because I wanted to call a timeout, but I left it in the trusting hands of Ty. Um, but I should have called the timeout to make sure we got the last shot. And you said they were playing erratic, but Destiny Henderson got a lot of minutes off of the bench. What did you like about her play that kept her on the floor? I like Destiny Henderson. I like what Lily gave us. Their energy from the defensive side of the ball. I thought they they sped Georgia up. They got us some easy buckets. Um, but we got put we got to put 40 minutes together. We got 20 more minutes. Coach, thank you. Thank you. Okay. As we take a look into the huddle. Now, Dawn wasn't happy when she talked to Drea walking off the court. She used the, play, the phrase playing erratic. She take a look at some of the numbers from the first half. And you thought when you were watching the South Carolina players come out of the locker room, like, oh, she did not give them a really cheery pep talk. Now, you played with Dawn. You played for Dawn. You've had some experience here. What do you think the message was from Dawn Staley to her team? Well, it's interesting because you look at Dawn and we saw the team waiting to run out. And they look nervous. They look, they're up 14, but they look nervous. And I think that's the sign of a great coach. Dawn is not trying to be a good team. She doesn't want this team to settle being good or being on the brim of great. She wants them to be great. So her expectation is every single day when you come out, every single possession, that we're the best team. 
Well, George has got the first possession of the second half. Zia Cook is back out there for South Carolina. She just played eight minutes in the first half, picked up a couple of fouls. And Maya Cogwell is not aggressive at all. She's playing side to side, but thank God for Gabby Connolly coming to the top. Connolly knocks down the three, went for 16 on 7 of 14 shooting against Alabama. She's got eight here this afternoon. If you're Georgia, that's a good start, but what do you have to continue to do as Herbert Harrigan gets fouled if you're going to upset the number one team in the country? Well, I think right there, Stephanie Paul trying to compete with Kiki Herbert Harrigan down low and ends up with the foul, but I think on the third foul of that, I think on the defensive end, just having your hands straight up, being able to play solid defense, trying to figure out, I mean, obviously Aaliyah Boston, that's a big task, but Kiki Herbert Harrigan, the way that she's play, been playing, so well, you got to figure out how to guard her along with all the other scores. On the offensive end, take care of the basketball. I think that's the biggest thing. You give yourself more of an opportunity to stay in the game by taking care of the ball. Herbert Harrigan is the first player into double figures for South Carolina. This is a team that has really balanced scoring due in large part to the play of their point guard, Ty Harris, who keeps everybody equally involved. So Paul will, I'm sorry, Tamika, Paul will stay in the game with the three fouls. Well, it's interesting, I was going to say, with Maya Coswell, when she catches the ball, and Bree Bill, we know how good of a defender she is, but when she catches the ball, she's not being aggressive. It's almost like she's scared of what Bree Bill has been able to do on the defensive end. Harris can't get the pull up. Again, when Dawn talked to Drea walking off the court about wanting to take a timeout, but Ty kept going and turned it over. Ty Harris had four turnovers in that first half. And characteristic for her, she's first in the conference in assist to turnover ratio at nearly three to one. Well, that's key her at it. Dawn also was mad at herself because she figured her and Ty Harris are always on the same page. She wanted to call a timeout, but she let Ty Harris make the decision. And Gabby Connolly knocked down that shot going into halftime. Herbert Harrigan rebounded by Chapman. Numbers the other way here for Georgia. They have to convert on a moment like this, and they almost throw it away. And a block by Boston, who recovers to block the shot of the six foot four stadium. And that's a travel. So they get a great play on the offensive end or on the defensive end. Come down, Bree Bill turns the ball over, but Jenna Stady taking her time for that shot. Do you not know <laughs> what Aaliyah Boston does? It does show up in the game plan. <laughs> Every I, once I, in a while. I assume you, uh, <laughs> I assure you, you can assume it's in the game plan. Came into the game with 79 blocks on the season. I just have to say this, we've seen this quite a bit, but that bounce pass from the guard to the post player, when there's three defenders around your post, is probably not gonna get there. So well, Gabby Connolly gets called for the foul. And checking in for the first time here in this tournament is Shania Jones. We nicknamed Jones the microwave after a couple of her games this season. She had 20 in her debut against Furman, and then went for a career high 21 against Auburn. But in the six games between those two games, she only had a total of 10 points. So when it happens, it happens quick. So that's what George is counting on here. Cook has her first point. SEC Now crew, Alyssa, Andy, and Steffi, they got started this morning. They will be here all afternoon. They will be here till late at night. That's what they do at tournament time. And today they're wrapping up the quarterfinal games and they'll preview at the end of the day the semifinal games. Because nobody covers the SEC like they do and like we do. You can also get it on the ESPN app. Back to a 15-point lead. And we were just talking about Jones and said when she turns it on, she turns it on, and they're hoping that putting her in the game, she'll have an opportunity to turn it on. That'll be the first personal foul for Aaliyah Boston. Says a lot for this freshman going against Jenna Stady down low. Only one foul going into the third quarter. Chapman. Harris stood her ground and made it tough for Chapman. Zion Cook. Cook walked. Man, South Carolina struggling a little bit, but Zion Cook, good look. She knew what she wanted to get. 
Take a little bit, one too many steps. Chapman. Not a, not a good move. Not a good move. I'll, I'll, give her, <laughs> I'll give her points for courage taking it at Boston. Paul tries to follow up. Paul oh, not done yet fighting against Boston. But Aaliyah Boston will eventually come away with the rebound. Cook, that's going to be an offensive foul on Zaya Cook. Cook is third on the team in scoring at better than 12 points a game, but a couple of fouls in the first half, she's been out of sync. Well, Boston right here has been on sync or in sync on the defensive end, deterred every single shot, and then able to get that, get the ball, but she's battling down there. It was interesting. Pre-game, you were keeping your eye on Aaliyah Boston. You thought maybe she was a little nervous. You were guessing because she wasn't doing her normal dancing around like the team usually does, but maybe she's just got a postseason focus that we're just seeing now for the first time as she makes her postseason debut. Well, I think you're coming into the SEC tournament. You know what happened last year for South Carolina, and no matter how good you are as a team, it just takes one game to knock you off. That won't drop, but a foul is called. Boston has nine points, 10 rebounds, four blocks, and two steals in her postseason debut for South Carolina. I want to go back to Zaya Cook a little bit. You know, she's just struggling a little bit when you look at what she's capable of doing and what she's done in the past with only two points. But just her being out there is effective enough. She does play defense. She forces turnovers. She makes players play on their heel, I and mean, she adds a lot of things outside of the fact that she can score. Ty Harris scores at the free throw line. Outstanding free throw shooter at 85%. Here's Maya Caldwell, who's the third leading scorer on this Georgia team, but she has been held scoreless so far today. Well, Maya Caldwell just needs to be more aggressive. She got the rebuild on her. Bill does foul. You got to be aggressive. You got to have that same tenacity. Well. Connolly's shoe. Gabby <laughs> Connolly's going with one shoe. She did that in a game earlier this season. Stady picks it up. So Connolly's got that shoe back on. Stady's got the basketball, needs some help, and gets it from the two shoot Connolly. Caldwell was foul. Well, that was a good play right there for her. Just trying to get Kiki Herbert Harrigan up a little bit of Brie Bill, up a little bit over her back. And hopefully for her, she'll get the confidence going to the free throw line, get a couple of back to get an opportunity to get her shot, the flow of her shot, so that she can try to stay in the game. <laughs> Gotta be the shoe. Or so maybe Gabby, Gabby Connolly is just so fast. She did, she did that in a game earlier this year. I want to say it, it might have been against South Carolina because I was there and she lost her shoe, but they kept playing. So she was running around <laughs> just with one shoe on and one off. Somebody must have hit a step out of a shoe. That's another way. Herbert Harrigan can't hit. Caldwell is down on the ground. Here's Jones. Hasn't been able to get a look yet. She's got the ball. She's looking to put it up. That's batted by Herbert Harrigan. It'll be Georgia ball. I like that attack, though. I like the... the Jones going to the basket, trying to be aggressive to the basket instead of settling for a, a jump shot. Well, Dawn Staley waited about five minutes, but she will go to her bench here for Saxton and Henderson. Those two provided a spark along with Lily Grissett in the first half. Well, she did say that. She said it's the energy. It felt like they gave a little bit of more energy when they came in off the bench. Catch, you're absolutely right about South Carolina's second unit bringing this energy. That is exactly what Coach Joni Taylor told me coming out of halftime. She said we can't have live ball turnovers, especially when that second unit comes in. That's going to be a foul on Jones for Georgia. That will get us a timeout with 4.57 to go here in the third quarter. Mississippi State will make their debut coming up here a little later on. They'll play LSU here tonight. The MVPs of the tournament. Again, a South Carolina theme with Asia Wilson winning back-to-back -back titles and Tierra McCowan with the MVP award 
for Mississippi State. Mississippi State is a team that will be interesting to see. They won their last two games of the regular season. They'll face an LSU team that beat Florida by 14 points. And Tennessee will take on Kentucky. And Ryan Howard, the player of the year in the SEC, closing things out tonight as part of quarterfinal Friday. It's interesting to see the list of MVPs and out of the five years, obviously Angel Wilson and all that she's been able to accomplish, but Tiffany Mitchell, another Indiana Fever player. Tia McCowan and Tiffany Mitchell. I, I, I knew you would work that out. Oh, of course I, I would, yeah. I was gonna do it, but I figured love. I'm not gonna take any of that fever love away from you. Jones with it. That basket by Herbert Harrigan was the first field goal South Carolina made here in the third quarter. They are now one for three, one for four from the field. Georgia is one for 10 from the floor here in the third. And another turnover for the Lady Bulldogs. Well, Shania Jones comes in the game and she had a turnover right before that last timeout, just had another turnover. You can tell by her body language. She is not trusting herself. Gabby Connolly just got knocked a bit. Not a good sign. Trailing the play as Ty Harris got a hand on it, knocked it out of bounds. So Chapman and Isaacs will come back into the game along with Hose. Connolly will head to the bench. Along with Paul and Jones. And Chapman for being a freshman, she comes in and she's so poised. Georgia pretty much puts a different lineup on the floor to try to get some offense spark. Chapman's an outstanding athlete. Ty Harris, such a heady player, was ready for the pass. Accelerates to the hoop and scores. Two more. She's into double figures as well. He said it's such a heady player. It's so much fun to watch, Ty Harris. Senior year product from Indianapolis, Indiana. Any other Indiana veterans you want to get in here? You want to just drop in Larry Bird for the heck of it right now? <laughs> Hose. Can't get it. Rebound batted around. Back out to Stady. Just not happening right now for Georgia. Caldwell will give them another chance. And she hits it. Maya Caldwell gets her first field goal. That's what it's going to take for Georgia, the fight, the hustle. But they got to get back on defense. Harris says settle down. I think that would be something that Don Staley would appreciate. <laughs> Harris got into trouble, but she never panics. And she can improvise as well. Hi, Harris. 13 points now for Ty to go along with her three assists. That defense, Destiny Henderson. Stady on the back cut, finding Hose. It's going to be a great springboard for Jenna Stady as she gets ready for her senior year in Athens. These last several weeks, she's really elevated her game, playing with a ton of confidence. And you can see she can pass it, she can shoot it, she can get the block shots. And hey, Kiki Herbert Harrigan. She can pass it, she can shoot it, she can get the block shots. <laughs> Do all that. Knocked away by Saxton. Isaacs has it. Hose, good shooter. Well, that's a good feel. Good look for Hose coming into the game and instantly five points. Harris will slow things down inside of 90 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Herbert Harrigan. Hose comes in to try to help out, but South Carolina still has it. Nine to shoot. Saxton, more paint points for South Carolina. A lot of bodies dropping, people just falling. But you gotta love the way everybody is playing. So much heart. Somehow that ended up in the hands <laughs> of Caitlin Hose. When you're hot, you're hot. Seven second half points for the sophomore. Look at Don's face on the bench. You just <laughs> it never really changes. She 
can twist it and contort it many different ways, but they all pass along the same message when she's not happy. <laughs> and Kiki Herbert Harrigan pulling out everything on the arsenal. You can drive it. We'll just say she can pass it. She can score. She can defend. The list goes on and on. Henderson to Harris. Harris was fouled by Chapman, and she will step to the free throw line. Final seconds of the third quarter. This is game one of four today. Coming up next, catch. what do you think of the matchup between Texas A&M and Arkansas? Arkansas putting 90 points on the board against Auburn. Texas A&M making their postseason debut for 2020. I am looking forward to this game. After watching Arkansas, the way that they shot, but the person that I think is going to have the biggest impact is Amber Ramirez for Arkansas. She did not shoot the ball well yesterday, but I know that her team has been in her head, the confidence that they all have. And then, of course, Coach Neighbor is just what he talks about all the time. I don't want you to look down when you catch the ball. I just want you to shoot it. And I'm sure that he's looking at the shot from yesterday's game. That's what he's doing. He could be, he could be breaking down <laughs> game film on his phone, yes. Amber Ramirez was 3 of 14 from the three-point line, but Neighbors did say after the game he wants her taking those 14 shots. If she has those same shots today in our next game, he wants her to take them every opportunity because they were good shots and just wasn't dropping. And I think for Texas a and it really does depend on Kennedy Carter. What Kennedy Carter will we see? Chapman couldn't get it, batted out of bounds, and with 1.1 to go, it'll be South Carolina ball. Henderson will heave it, and that is it for the third quarter. South Carolina stretches the lead out to 22, thanks in large part to the play of their large presence in the middle. Aaliyah Boston with nine points and ten rebounds, and we'll talk with someone very near and dear to her heart when we come back to Greenville. The freshman of the year in the SEC, making her SEC tournament debut, and she has been a difference maker on both ends of the floor. Defensively, she's got four blocks and two steals. Offensively, nine points. And by the way, 10 rebounds, closing in on a double-double as her team is on top by 22. And here's a key part of Aaliyah's team with Andrea. Mrs. Cleone, you're Aaliyah Boston's mom. Thank you so much for joining me. I know you flew up from St. Thomas to be here. What has it been like watching Aaliyah perform? It has been wonderful. You know, to see the season that God has given her, not knowing what to expect, because no matter how good you are in high school, you know that there's still so much growth to take place. And to see her this freshman season, even though she still has a long way to go, we just know God has blessed her, and it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. And we've seen what she can do on the court. We've seen her personality this season. What are you the most proud of? Honestly, to, to watch her grow on the basketball court has been amazing. But I think the biggest thing that, I am, or the, that I'm most proud of is who she is off the court. She's remained herself, she's remained humble, she's remained thankful, and she's remained a great teammate um, to the children that you know, God has surrounded her with on this team. So who she is off the court is, is an even better person than she is basketball player. And she seems to have so much fun with her teammates. In your opinion, what makes this team so special? I think it is her teammates and the coaching staff. The things that they've done to foster relationships off the court, I think that's what makes them function so well on the court. Um, that family environment. I mean, Aliyah knew it when she felt it, and my husband and I, our whole entire family, feel like we are part of this family, this Gamecock family, and I think that is what makes us so special. Ms. Cleon, thank you so much. Thank you. Back to you, Eric. All right, Ryan, thank you so much. And a foul called on Hubbard. Well, I've got to say, in our, our interactions with Aaliyah this year, and I know you've spent some time with her as well, uh, kudos to her parents for raising a wonderful daughter who's fit right in with the South Carolina family. But what she just said is what we've experienced. Just tremendous kid, very positive person, fun-loving, and by the way, a great basketball player <laughs> at the end of all that. Well, I think her mom hit it on the nail, you know, you to have 
your young lady come to college and come away from home going in you want them to be in the best environment and being in coach Staley and the coaching staff and just the teammates that she has being able to stay and remain humble is with all the things that she's done but we've seen that in the way she's approached each one of us and you know the rest of our staff and just so fun loving and young <laughs> we also see the immaturity because she is just a fresh <laughs> Saxton picks it up, and here comes Henderson across half court. Well, in the third quarter, after an 0-3 start from the field, South Carolina made seven of their next eight shots to stretch it out to a 22-point lead. They've extended it now to 26 as they move closer and closer to a semifinal matchup against the winner of our next game between Arkansas and Texas A&M. Well, Georgia going to a little bit of a zone. Zaya Cook continues to struggle shooting-wise. And that will give it to Georgia. You talked about being humble. That's one thing that I think stands out about this entire South Carolina team. They are selfless. They share the ball. Everyone is involved. Everyone feels like they're involved. Dawn regularly plays nine in the first half of each game. And we added it up. The scoring is so balanced that their top four scores coming into this game, and you look at their total points for the year, were separated by just 26 points. There's not one player just dominating scoring. Everyone gets a touch, everyone gets a chance. And Ty Harris, according to Dawn Staley, is a big reason why that she knows to keep everybody involved in who needs to get going and who's in the space to score as Caldwell scores for Georgia. Well, I think that's important from a point guard situation is to know what your players need, to know what your teammates need, who hasn't touched the ball, who had touched the ball. And Ty Harris has learned that over the course of time. And when you look at Dawn, and I think about Dawn as a player, I got an opportunity to play with her for the Olympic team, and that's what I remember. The Cheryl Fluke, the Dawn Staley, the Lisa Leslie, her at the helm, and making sure, because just think, Lisa and Cheryl on the same floor, <laughs> just the two of them, and how dominant they are from a scoring situation. She knew who to get the ball to and win. Beautiful finish by Lily Grissett, and the foul. Lily Grissett, South Carolina, they continue to do it together on the offensive end, but right there you see Destiny Henderson getting it to Lily Grissett on the drive. Great finish, foul by Maya Caldwell. And then you, you can look at them and you see the smiles on their faces. They are having so much fun out there. Grissett is four for four from the field. Nicholson, I think, was surprised that she was a, there, there's not Victoria Saxton or Aaliyah Boston she did look around. around. She looked around to make sure she don't want to be a part of the block party. She said, I'm good. I don't want that. Destiny Henderson and Lily Grissett have been very good again off the bench for South Carolina. It's just the energy that they brought to this team. And then, of course, on the defensive end, they continue to force turnovers. Grissett calling for it after she gave it up. Henderson rewards her. Timeout. And this crowd will salute South Carolina as we go to break. What a performance yesterday for Arkansas senior Alexis Tollfree. 30 points, including seven three-pointers. 17 three-pointers as a team for Arkansas yesterday. They'll need more of the same today against Texas A&M. She's gone for 30 or more four times this year, all since the start of conference play. So Tollfree will be one to watch coming up about 30 minutes after the conclusion of this game of course Alyssa, Steffi and Andy will keep company between games reviewing this one and then previewing that 4-5 matchup between Texas A&M and Arkansas. Texas A&M will throw bodies at that three point line so it's not going to be as easy for toll free and Amber Ramirez. Chelsea Dungey had a very good game yesterday so when you look at that matchup between A&M and Arkansas what will be the deciding factor 
for that team to move on to play, which looks to be South Carolina. Well, I think the biggest thing is continue to shoot the ball the way that they did yesterday. Adding Amber Ramirez and what she's capable of doing, she got to play at a high level. Now on the flip side, Texas A&M has had one more day to rest. They will come out today. They will be rested. Arkansas, though, has the opportunity. The way that they played yesterday, they go continue to build on that. The question for A&M is, will they come out here and have that rust that we've seen for a few teams, including South Carolina, who, in their head coach's words, was playing erratic. Although Lily Grissett would take exception to that, saying, Coach, I've been fine since the second I stepped on the floor. <laughs> Nothing erratic about Nothing my game. Erratic it's about very the way disruptive in a defense. good way, yeah. Well, it's interesting because Georgia, like Maya Codwell, she came into the game. I, I believe she came into the game a little bit intimidated with Bree Bill playing against her and knowing how good of a defender Bree Bill was. So that took her off a little bit. She scored a little bit more since then. Aaliyah Boston goes to the bench. <laughs> a little fist bump and a familiar smile. I thought Don was trying to get her in for that double-double. Caitlin Hose, who's been very good off the bench for Georgia. Nine points all this half for Hose. Melissa Weselick is into the game for South Carolina, for Boston. Well, this is the opportunity that you have to get your players an opportunity to play. Now you can see at the top of your screen, the bench was up on their feet because they're trying to get their teammate to drop on in there. She almost got it. I think she got a little nervous too. Like she was there, she was wide open the first time. And knowing that to get to that championship game, you play today, you play tomorrow, and then you play Sunday. If you can have time to rest some of your players, you do that in the game. Timeout on the floor with 4.56 to go in the fourth quarter and the number one team rolling here in Greenville. Ooh, Coach Jelly's style is one of a kind. I need that drip. I think it's good. I think I give it a 10. She real swaggy. She smooth with it. There's a feeling that you have when you know it's the outfit. Every time she comes in before the game, we're always like, ooh. I love shoes, I love sneakers, I love what I look like below my ankles. She used to teach me how to dress because I wear Crocs. <laughs> well, as we found out yesterday, when it comes to drip, Andy Landers defines <laughs> that as I have to call a plumber. It means something completely different. I usually handle the fashion analysis on our broadcast team, but I'm going to hand it over to Drea right now. Let, let's see what she has to say. Go ahead, Andrea. Well, if you look at Kiki Herbert Harrigan's Instagram, Eric, you will learn everything you need to know about fashion. She's got the off-white shoes, she's got the Gucci shoes, she's got the fresh outfits, so her complimenting Dawn Staley's outfits, that's a really big deal. I asked Ty Harris who the fashion queen was, and she said Kiki for sure. So you gotta check out her Instagram, you'll learn a little something. Well, Ty meant, of course, Drea, of the players, because you are not gonna take that title away from the head coach. Right, exactly, okay, just, exactly. Just, just let's be clear. <laughs> The players, let's be clear. <laughs> Don Staley's the queen of everything on that team. No, it's so funny because you think about oh, I look back, Don, but Tina Thompson for our team. Between Tina Thompson, Lisa, Cheryl, I would say Tina is the one. She's swaggy, so co coaching now at Virginia, but she's swaggy. So who would, who would, would win the battle between those three back in the, the playing days? Like, you know, when you the days you're talking about here, it sounds like it was quite a battle. Like, who would show up? Honestly, I don't know if fashion, like, I, they all dress really nice, but I think now, like, it become more of a thing. Okay. Like, people are, like, competing is more of a thing, so I can't really give you that answer. And I don't really know if I would Do you mean to tell me attention. In, in that list of players, I was not paying Dawn attention Staley, to what they were wearing. They're competitive. I was, focused. <laughs> wow. I was focused on the game. Did you at least coordinate your colors all right, or were you a clasher? I, mean, I, I know you're so focused on the game plan. And the typical tomboy, as long as I just had some clothes on, I really didn't care if they <laughs> well, matched. We all, we I all was appreciate that. more about the that, uniform. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh, we got the last. Thompson coming off the bench. Everybody's starting to cheer. 
You, I'm going to assume too, back in your playing days, you did not have the neon footwear with the different color on. Okay, well, can we just stop Either saying side. back in your days like I'm just so old? I'm not that old. Can that. we just say, if, you know, if you wanted when to you say, were like, playing. you know, back in the age of the dinosaurs when you were playing. That would be you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When I was just back a few in the day, short when, years when I, ago, when there you, you go. That sounds so much better. Only 2016. Back when you wore your canvas Chuck Taylors. That was my dad. My dad <laughs> Dave. He had a. He was actually had a, a contract. He had a Chuck Taylors contract yeah, Con with Converse. Oh, nice. Can you imagine playing basketball in those well, shoes right now? I hate to break it to you, but I did. Oh. Lateral movement just wasn't strong in him. Here's Henderson. That was the other day at the YMCA, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> YMCA MVP. See, we, wore, we wore Chuck Taylors for fashion. That's That was back in oh, Well, they're still day. there. My, my little nephews still wear those for fashion. Okay. Not for playing, but That's for fashion. That's the extent of my fashion. You, Dre had us covered. Kiki's got South Carolina covered. And Dawn's got everybody. Everybody. Covered. Connolly to Stady. In the quiet second half for Jenna Stady. Those are her first points since halftime. She's got 16. Inside of three and a half to go. Well, I'll be honest with you, Jenna Stady, when she was in earlier, Georgia didn't really pass her the ball down low. Feed into Stady. Trying to work on a knee here. Wesselek had the handle. Arkansas and AM coming up next. 4 5 matchup. That game was tight in Fayetteville. It was the SEC opener for both teams. Arkansas fell behind to Texas AM. They came back to tie it in the second half before AM pulled away. And as we showed you a few minutes ago, Arkansas coming off that epic performance, setting an SEC tournament record by making 17 three pointers. Well, it's tournament time, and you come into this tournament every single day. Gives you another day to live, another day to breathe. Caitlin Hose can't hit there, and a rebound for me here. And I like that shot for Caitlin Hose, how she's played in the second half. Kind of single-handedly has put some points on, this, on the board to keep Georgia somewhat, can't necessarily say close, but to give her more points. Back into me here. Stady with the rebound. Well, as we talk about Georgia before this game's e game ends and a timeout being called to get the substitutions in here for Joni Taylor, and she will get her other senior into the game right now. Ari Henderson will come into the game. Jenna Stady will sit down. It was a good tournament for Stady. A combined 36 points in her two games and a great closeout to the regular season. And it's good to see Ari Henderson out there. We were in uh, Georgia, in Athens, Georgia, this past Sunday for senior night. And Stephanie Paul, Ari, Ari Henderson, got an opportunity to stop the or start the game. Deserve a little opportunity, a little time. And Ari can't hold on to it. She's a senior, former walk-on, now on scholarship for the third year. This is her sixth game this season, but she is a future Navy officer. She will. Head into the Naval Civil Engineering Corps and begin her career serving our country after her Georgia basketball career and after she's got her diploma in Athens. That's me here on the drive getting her first field goal. And how cool is that? Henderson will be great representing our country. Seems like an amazing person. And, you know, of course, when we talk to Joni, she is just so impressed with what she done more so in the or more so academically in her aspiration. Well, how about team-wise for Joni Taylor? When you look at what's coming back for next year, Q Morrison, as we've talked about through this tournament, out after having labrum surgery, she'll be a senior. You're losing Paul and Henderson from the senior class. You have a Jenna Stady, who has emerged as a different player here over the last few weeks. If she can grow her game as Henderson. Tries to get it inside, and it's taken away by South Carolina. This will be a veteran group next year for Georgia. Thompson trying to connect from the corner, and it's put back in by me here. Yeah, I like looking out here on the on the court, and you know, obviously, 
allowing these players some time on the court for South Carolina as they continue to advance and look at that. Obviously, their, their goal right now is the SEC tournament, but ultimately, it would be to win the championship. And you've got to have your players, you've got to give them some time on the court, and you've got to give some of your starters some rest. Here's Javin Nicholson for Connolly. Shot clock down to five. Connolly on the run, 4 2. Gabby gets into double figures. South Carolina en route to the semifinals. They'll take on the winner of our next game between Texas AM and Arkansas. Now me here for three. It's a two, correction, a two for the freshman. And Dawn had some great things to say about Amir here in practice as well. So good to see her doing so well. Wesselak with the steal, crowd to their feet, and it's knocked away. She lost the handle, and it will be Georgia basketball. Look at Dawn looking at him. Georgia will put it into play. Time will wind down, and that will do it. For the fourth time in the Dawn Staley era, South Carolina has 30 wins. Eighty-nine, fifty-six. the final. It's on to the semifinals for South Carolina. Well, South Carolina came out that second half, and they were so dominant. They scored in the paint. They scored all over. But I think the thing that you look at the most is how it was spread between the team. Not just one player had it. Obviously, Aaliyah Boston, she did her thing. And Kiki Herbert Harrigan came out. Ty Harris, her leadership and what she's capable of doing. But as a team, it was such a dominant performance. So one spot in the semifinal round is claimed. It is claimed by the number one team in the tournament, South Carolina, after their win over Georgia. They'll play in the early game tomorrow evening here in Greenville against the winner of our next game between Arkansas and Texas A&M. South Carolina salutes the big crowd that made the trip here to Greenville to support their Gamecocks. And Carolina doesn't have to leave the state. They'll play here in the SEC tournament. They'll host in Columbia and roots to the NCAA tournament. Here's Drea with Aaliyah Boston. Aaliyah, this is your first SEC tournament game. What emotions were you feeling coming into today? Um, I was just really excited because, like I said, this is my first one, and just there's just so much hype around this tournament, so I was just excited to see what it's about. And I saw a smile and a little fist pump when you went to the bench. How did you feel about your performance? I mean, I thought I did all right. I think I didn't hit some of the shots that I thought I would, but I'm just really glad that we got the win because it was just an exciting turnout. And I actually did an interview with your mom. She talked about how proud her and your dad are of you. What does their support mean to you? I mean, it means everything because without them, like, I wouldn't even be where I am right now because of the sacrifice that they've made, I'm able to be here. And she also kind of talked to me a little bit about what she thinks makes this team so special. What do you think makes this team special? I think it's the, the chemistry that we have and the, uh, how we feel about each other because we're really happy and excited for each other. Like I know you can see that today, especially when everyone scored or just blocks and things like that. Like we're just generally happy. And I know you all are really excited for each other on and off the court, but basketball wise, why are you such a dangerous team? Because we have so much depth. Like, we went through the entire bench, and everyone everyone stood up. Everyone made the cut. So, it's, I mean, it's just, it's just a great thing. Thanks, Aaliyah. Thank you. For a split second, I thought Aaliyah was nervous that her mom told some <laughs> secrets that she shouldn't have. But it was all good, Aaliyah, and you were good today. Nine points, ten rebounds, four blocks, and South Carolina rolls.